Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 13.1, Trigonomic Identities. And what is an identity? An identity is true for all values of theta. Theta could be any degree measure. So you could plug any degree measure in for any theta, and these tri trig identities will hold true. Now these are just the basic tri trig identities that we should know how to handle and how to work with. Just know that there are more trig identities as you keep going. However, with that being said, you know how to use the trig identities, but we're going to show you that you can use trigonomic functions to help you with the trig identities. So now our sine, cosine, and tangent all come back, or SOHCAHTOA, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent using right triangles. With this, you also need to know cast, right? We spell cast right here, C-A-S-T, starting in the fourth quadrant. And what that describes to us is what's positive and negative. So if in quadrant one, where we have the A, A stands for all. All trig functions are positive. So sine, cosine, and tangent are all positive. Now, as we move over to 90 degrees, we're in quadrant two. Now, where we have this S, only the sine and its opposite, cosecant, are positive. The rest are negative. Then we keep going to 180, quadrant three, where it's the T. T stands for tangent. Tangent and its opposite, cotangent, are positive. Sine and cosine are negative. And then finally in quadrant four, where we have the C, the C stands for cosine, so only cosine is positive, so cosine and secant are positive, sine and tangent are negative. With one and two, we are asked to use zero degrees is less than or equal to theta is less than or equal to 90 degrees. What does that mean? That means that we are using the first quadrant. And why are we using the first quadrant? Because if we go back a slide, notice how zero degrees from 90 degrees is in quadrant one. So we want to use quadrant one for the first two problems. Also note that all of the trig functions in quadrant one are positive. So we are staying in quadrant one for the first two problems and all the trig functions are positive. So let's handle number one here. Find cosine theta if sine theta equals two thirds. First, we start with this sine theta equals two thirds. What is sine? Sine is opposite over the hypotenuse. So we go to our right triangle. We draw this right triangle if you want. Put theta in a non-right angle. And then we have two is opposite. So opposite of theta is that side right here. And then we have three for the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is there. Now we do not know what this side is. So we have to use Pythagorean to find that. Remember a hypotenuse is C squared or the one by itself. So it is two squared plus B squared equals three squared. We simplify four plus B squared equals nine. B squared equals five. Remember we have to s solve for B. So B equals the square root of five. So we put it on our triangle. The square root of five goes right here. Now we are asked to find cosine theta. Well, cosine theta is adjacent over the hypotenuse. So we go back to our theta. Here's our theta. The adjacent side is going to be the square root of 5. So we have cosine theta equals the square root of 5 because that is the adjacent side over what is my hypotenuse. My hypotenuse is 3. So our answer is cosine theta equals square root of 5 over 3. And it is positive, ladies and gentlemen, because notice what quadrant I am in. I'm in quadrant one. All my trig functions are positive, so this is going to stay positive. Number two, now we are looking for secant if tan is one-third. Well, what is tangent? 
tangent is opposite over the adjacent. So let's go ahead and put those down. There's our theta. Opposite is 1. Adjacent is 3. So we need to find our hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is all by itself on one side. So we have Pythagorean 1 squared plus 3 squared. That's going to equal c squared. We simplify 1 plus 9 equals c squared. Then we have 10 equals c squared. Solving for c, c equals the square root of 10 when it's all said and done. So our hypotenuse is the square root of 10. What are we looking for? We are looking for secant. Well, secant is hypotenuse over the adjacent. So from our same theta, we have hypotenuse, which is now the square root of 10. So it's secant theta equals the square root of 10 over what is our adjacent side? 3. So it's 3. And it is also positive because we are in quadrant 1. So secant theta is the square root of 10 over 3. With 3 and 4, we are asked to use 180 degrees is less than or equal to theta is less than or equal to 270 degrees. So what quadrant does that put us into? If we go back a couple sides, we see that it puts us in quadrant 3. Well, quadrant 3 is what? Quadrant 3 is tangent, and so the only thing that is positive is tangent. So tangent is positive. So in 3, we are asked to find cosine theta if tangent of theta equals 3 fourths. Well, what is tangent? Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we have opposite and we have adjacent. So from this theta, opposite is going to be 3. Adjacent is going to be 4. Now we have to find our hypotenuse. How do we do that? We use Pythagorean. We're looking for hypotenuse, so it goes by itself. We have 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared. We have 9 plus 16 equaling c squared. We have 25 equals c squared. c equals 5. So our hypotenuse is 5. What are we looking for? We are looking for cosine theta. Cosine equals adjacent over the hypotenuse. So our adjacent is 4 so we have cosine theta equals 4 over our hypotenuse is 5. So we put that down 4 fifths. Last thing to note is what quadrant are we in? We are in quadrant 3. So the only positive is tangent. So our cosine should be a negative. 4 fifths because cosine in quadrant 3 is negative, so we make this a negative 4 fifths. Let's try one more. In 4, we are looking for cosecant. If cosine is a negative 1 fourth, ladies and gentlemen, do not worry about that negative. Just play it as is. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is going to be 1. Our hypotenuse is going to be 4. Let's rock and roll with Pythagorean. We have 1 squared plus b squared. You could pick any letter there. I just happen to pick b equals 4 squared. We have 1 plus b squared equals 16. b squared equals 15. We have b that equals the square root of 15. So now this side equals the square root of 15. What were we asked to find? We were asked to find cosecant. Well, cosecant equals hypotenuse over opposite. So hypotenuse is 4, so we have cosecant of theta equals 4 over the square root of 15. Before we get into positive and negative, can we have a square root of 15 on the bottom? 
No, we cannot have a square root on the bottom, so we take the top and the bottom times the square root of 15, just a little bit of review here. So now we have the cosecant of theta equals 4 times the square root of 15 over just 15, because 15 times 15 is 225. Square root of that is 15. So cosecant theta equals 4 times the square root of 15 over 15. But is it positive or negative? Cosecant is the opposite of sine. So sine is negative in quadrant 3. So we make this guy negative. Always make sure to double check if it's positive or negative in your quadrants. Lastly, we have some review just to make sure we know what we're doing when a square root is on a bottom of a fraction. So it's on the bottom here. So we take the bottom and top by the square root of 3. On top, it goes 2 times the square root of 3 all over the square root of 9. The bottom should always come out clean for us. So we have 2 times the square root of 3 over 3. Those 3's can't cancel out because this is not really a 3, it's in a square root. With 2, what is on the bottom? A square root 5. We cannot have a square root on the bottom, so we multiply top and bottom by the square root of 5. So on top, we just have a square root 5, or 1 square root 5, all over the square root of 25. The square root of 25 turns into 5, so it's square root 5 over 5. Here with 3, it's a little bit tricky, but keep going here. If you don't want to simplify the square root of 8 right now, we can square root, or, uh, simplify it later. So we times both top and bottom by square root of 8. So on top, it goes 3 square root 8 over the square root of 64. We simplify this mess to be 3 square root 8 over 8. And for right now, I would accept this, but let's see if we can keep going with this. Ladies and gentlemen, we have 3, and that square root of 8 we can break down into 4 times 2, yes? Still over 8. Well, remember, we can square root this 4. That square root of 4 turns into 2, so it's 2 times 3 now on the outside, which is... 6 square root 2 over 8. Since 6 and 8 are both outside the square root, we can simplify. So it's 3 square root 2 all over 4 for our final answer. And ladies and gentlemen, that does it for section 13.1, Trigonomic Identities. Good day.